Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program, The Platform. Uh, we examine national and sometimes international issues on our program. One of the good things about having Peter Nygaard in the Bahamas is that he has been inspiring a whole lot of Bahamians to live healthy lives. Uh, this is what he does around the world, uh, whether he is in the United States, Canada, or even in Asia. Uh, he is on a health kick uh, craze, as some people would call it, to get people to live healthy lives. And I'm not just talking about stem cell uh, research and, and uh, therapy. We are talking about just generally uh, changing uh, people's lifestyles to live uh, very uh, healthy lifestyles. And so uh, every time he comes to the Bahamas, we invite him here so that we can talk about good health habits. And it's a pleasure to have Peter Nygaard with us again today. Mr. Nygaard, welcome. Always nice to be here. Uh, uh. You, you um, people wouldn't know your age, but we're not going to say what it is. But when you say it, I'm 75 years old. 75, 75 years old. 75 years old, yeah. And, uh, and you know, look, I, got, I, got, I got bones and muscle and skin of a 25, 35 year old. Now, I must admit, I got joints of a 70 year old, you know. So, 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 so what I'm saying here is that some parts of my body is actually getting younger, noticeably so. And then I got other parts of my body that I need to get to solving, such as your joints. Now, joints are the first thing that goes in any human being. Mm -hmm. That's our weakest link. Spine is the weakest of the joints, and then you get the knees, etc. So we know all of us are experiencing in joint problems. And so that's the first thing to go. So now I'm very focused on actually being able to rebuild cartilage. When I shook your hand a, a while ago, I said to you that you, you have the grip of the giant. Uh, yeah. So you, you, you're very strong. I tell you, people, is, people did, we're on the test today about how young you are, the real young you are, is by your grip. So when I do a grip test, it makes me a 35-year-old, 35-year-old, a real bull of an athlete. You know, not only just a 35-year-old, but a really strong, those kind of football players or those guys that are strong. So, so you, you, you already feel that. that. That's a feel of youthfulness, you know. And then, of course, what does that mean? It means that you have muscle, and I have more and more muscle all the time, you know, and, uh, and, and, and you have strength, etc. It's important to have muscle. The biggest muscle, your most important muscle you have, you've got two really important muscles, like the brain and the heart. You know, those are important muscles. And you don't let that fat, heart get fat or the brain get fat, you know. Mm -hmm. So muscles are not only outside muscles, you know, but muscles are all within your own body. And so, so, so we, one of the tests, are many, there's many tests for this aging issue occurring. Uh, that's one of them you mentioned. Mm -hmm. and, and I have many other ones. Uh, and, and maybe about 14 or 15 different things since we talked about this subject past in the past have now become clear that this man is getting younger. And At least a part of my body is like getting younger, yes. right? And you've, you've been doing this not just by exercising, uh, but uh, you, you are teaching uh, people around the world uh, in changing their lifestyles, aren't you? I sure am, and now I'm becoming a very sought-after speaker. Uh, the earlier program you showed where I was speaking to this RAD festival, which is a very advanced one of anti-aging, radical, radical, action, radical movements to become anti-aging. And, and, and then now, after six years of getting into this, I'm now actually teaching those people who in the audience who used to teach me. I'm teaching the teachers right now. And on that particular program, I was one of the best speakers there and a standing ovation for it because my subject was so compelling. And it's, it's important for a number of reasons. This has been a vacuum in this, in this field of somebody really having uh, the, the perseverance to go ahead and lead this whole program of preventive medicine. So I became a leader for that by three different things. One. I was ready to put my money where my mouth was, and I invested about $20 million since we first started talking about it mm -hmm. over here into it, searching for all these answers and getting them. And second, I was ready to test them on myself, and I had to test them on myself, you know, to prove that this works and became an example of it. 
and three, my advocacy. I became very, very knowledgeable about it. Now at a point where I can command the attention of the best people in the world on it, why did I become knowledgeable about it? I have a very keen mind. I always have had to be able to learn. And then I go to learn from the best of the best of the best of the best. And this subject is growing with us exponentially. Every year, every year we're getting new discoveries, new discoveries, new discoveries. And quite frankly, what you learned 10 years ago, even five years ago, it's not irrelevant. It's all new stuff, right? And a lot of these other people don't have time or ability to learn about this subject and about this subject. So I have a ability to learn about all the three criteria that make our body and how our body functions because I have now taken that as my mission. And not the, one, one of the key things is, well, no, it's a mission of necessity. I'm not doing this now to make a billion dollars. How did you get into it? I got into it for all the right reasons. I was working for five years from age 65 to 69 trying to save my mom's life. And I would do anything in the world to save her life. And after the doctors, and she was 87 years old, and after the doctors in Mayo Clinic said that she doesn't have long to live, well, that's all we can do for her, I said, bull, <laughs> that's not so. I'm not going to give up. There must be an answer, you know. That's, a, that's part of my persistence. Right? And I went in and into this, quite, almost like accidentally, into this big convention called Singularity. Ray Kurzweil was what it was, is like the Albert Einstein of this industry, you know. And he, he's a computer genius, etc. And he's trying to work and make, make AI to be the instrument, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. to be the instrument for our health. He said, by the time we get AI done, then we can figure this thing out because our own mind is not capable of figuring the complexities involved with the human body. So he's putting computer technology into it. And I'll tell you what, just on the sideline there, Google has put $3 billion into him, into him and tried to do this, computerize this whole process. You know, so it's a very serious undertaking, right? By some visionary people. Mm -hmm. But what did that do to me? It made me all of a sudden put the light on and sell this issue is all about stem cells. Because you know, his, his issue is putting artificial intelligence into it, into stem cells, into your body curing itself, into this, into this whole issue of being able to survive. And his favorite word is immortality. You know? Now, it's all of our, all through history, everybody's been trying to be immortal. All of the Egyptians tried to be immortal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tried to be immortal. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, and so, 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 so his, his Ray Kurzweil was sort of the leader of this singularity. I went in there and I found out about stem cells right from the bat. I, it was like a light come on. And I went in there and found out about some doctors who are proactive in preventive medicine. And I went to take a test with them right away. And I found out horrible things about myself. We, I think we've shown some pictures of it. I was 69 years old. I was 215 pounds. Mm -hmm. I had a stomach. I had a stomach. I did 13 push-ups. I did four pull-ups. You know, I was miserably weak guy for a guy who's been an athlete all my life. I, like a lot of Bahamian people, have let themselves go. I was born with a good gene pool. I was an Olympic caliber athlete, you know, and then I let myself go, you know, and got fat and ruined my, my health. Well, I looked at that mirror and I said, my God, you know, it says, you, this is not you. You can and do better than I that. I can do better than that. And then I heard something about this trip from 70 to 80 was not a nice trip. Something bad can happen on a trip. I said, I ain't going on that journey. I'm not going on that journey. <laughs> oh. And well, you know what, Wendell? I didn't. I'm 75 years old now, and I'm younger than I was when I was 69. By every measurement there is, you know. Because of uh, the stem cell, you taking your own stem cell. Because of the yourself. whole package, and you alluded earlier to the fact that this is a whole package of preventive medicine. It's a whole package of things. And while stem cells is, is the big prize at the end of the, end, of the, end of the rainbow, you know, there's a lots and lots and lots of other issues underneath that stem cell umbrella that we have to do every single day that are derivatives of the stem cell world. You know, so stem cells, for example, produce a lot of growth factors, a lot of communicative factors. You know, they produce cytokines and exosomes. You know, you get a sort of picture of stem cell going to your body and it sort of shoots 
shoots, shoots, all these wonderful proteins and things that do all these great things for your life, GDF 11s and all that kind of thing. We have learned now, I have learned now, and, and from the scientists who are doing it, so much more in the last year alone about the, what the stem cell really benefits are. Punchline is that we can use our own body to cure ourselves. God has given us the ability to use our own body to cure itself. We just have to intellectually make sure that we understand it. So, so, so God has given us a lot of ability in our brain, you know, to, to survive to this point, you know, from where we were born, right? Mm -hmm. And God has given this ability right now to do it as well. So for the religious people, this is a gift from God, you know, what I'm talking about right now. You know, this is you, you've lectured, um, as we said, around the world. And uh, we have a, a video that we are going to show right now. Uh, and um, well, before we show this video, tell me where you find the time to do this. Uh, you you run a, a billion dollar business um, oh, with know. thousands of employees. Um, I saw the other day that um, Dillitz, I think, uh, sold a, a million um, pants. Uh, pants yeah, gee, slims, yeah. Uh, um, as um, your your creation, and so uh, you are marketing this around the world. You are designing. Uh, around the world, where do you find time to get involved in, in preventive medicine you or know, preventive health? It, 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 it is the big question. I, I, I don't think I've worked harder in my life than now. I don't never take a day off. I go to work every single morning. You know, it doesn't matter where it is. You know, a lot of people around me are totally upset at that. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you're just burning us all out, right? So I, I've been fortunate in a sense that I've been able to have a tremendous amount of energy and a tremendous challenge oriented. When do I'm a builder. I'm a builder. I've noticed that that I can build things. I love to build things. I love to create things. I like to make things better. I have built buildings. I have built product. Product. And you know what else? The biggest issue is I build people. You know, and it's my greatest joy is to build people, make them better, and in this case now, make them healthier. I know you started the program, but I've been preaching a lot about this health issue. That's an enjoyment for me, is to be able to share this wonderful knowledge that I do have right now with my fellow man and do good. You know? All right, let's show this video now of one of your lectures. Since the dawn of time, great men have challenged the status quo and dared to dream. For every new pioneer, only time can unlock the future. Only history will tell the story. This is CNN Breaking News. The University of Oregon made a major announcement on stem cells, one that could lead to breakthroughs in the treatment of Parkinson's, cancer, and many other diseases. For the first time, human skin cells have been transformed into embryonic stem cells. Dr. Shukrat Matalipov of the University of Oregon were successfully able to insert an adult skin cell into an unfertilized human egg, which had been stripped of its existing DNA. So that way, the stem cells we create, they would be compatible if we transplant these tissues back into patients. The process called somatic cell nuclear transfer, or SCNT, is not new, but the results are and are considered to be a quantum leap forward in the reversal of aging and the treatment of disease. The stem cells came to its own with Dolly the sheep in 1997. Up until now, the problem has been one of rejection. That our body simply rejects all foreign objects put into it, including somebody else's stem cells. It's been 15 years since we invented embryonic stem cells. No one figured out to use it. You know, ever since scientists discovered embryonic stem cells, they wanted to be able to tailor make those cells with the genetic material of the patients they're trying to treat. And this is the technique that would finally be able to accomplish that goal. From the woman's egg, we took out her DNA, put my old, 70-year-old DNA in its place, grew it, in vitro, develop embryonic stem cells, age zero. This is huge. This is a game changer. This could eliminate all disease. This perhaps is immortality. Peter Nygaard, a 
Finnish Canadian fashion tycoon and self made billionaire who parlayed an $8,000 loan into an empire with annual profits in the hundreds of millions. I want to live forever or die trying. Bring the action. One man, younger at heart than those half his age, living a life most could only dream of, yet sharing his collective fortune with our collective human fate. To live forever. A thousand year old quest made by the legendary Ponce de Leon, the Spanish explorer who spent his days searching for the fountain of youth. Ponce de Leon had the right idea. He was just too early. That was then. This is now. Preach. If you want something different, beloved, you've got to do something different. This has always been a four step plan to find the right technology to find the right country, to write the proper laws, and to get the correct facility. Human beings in a mind. Currently, there are two leading technologies in stem cell duplication, SCNT and what is called IPS, induced pluripotent stem cells. But when I ask anybody, which would actually be better, IPS or SCNT? Well, of course, SCNT. If we could ever get past the religious objections and all the bad PR it's getting. Last time when it was announced by some Korean researchers, it turned out to be a hoax, right? Or a... It was a fraud. It was... SCNT was dropped altogether. Nobody was interested in it any longer. Nobody except me. Critics say the stem cells come from destroying embryos. And my newsmaker tonight says that that is simply not true. The way in which these stem cell lines were derived is from embryos that are created in the process of in vitro fertilization. And in fact, there are hundreds of thousands of these embryos that are simply being discarded. We throw in the garbage. We shouldn't do that. And so in 2009, Peter Nygaard creates Nygaard Biotech employing four top scientists from around the world in the field of SCNT, channeling his tremendous energy towards finding the missing link in stem cell technology. The top scientist in SCNT. I'll give you my DNA now. And one of them was Russian. And of course the Russian was discovered it. Well, I'm very glad in any event that uh, you stayed honest and you made this uh, huge discovery. Well, this is a very well-respected, well-known keno scientist out at Oregon Health and Science University. The technology is real, so it works. It's a uh, it's done deal. I may be the only person in the world who has my own embryonic stem cells growing in a Petri dish. Can you imagine that? In the Petri dish, that is me before I was born. Science fiction? Scientific fact. When we die, the money we can't keep, but we probably spend it all because the pain ain't cheap. With the Western world still embroiled in political debate over embryonic stem cells, Peter set out to find a suitable host country. traveled everywhere in the world uh, now for the last two years, just looking. In Shenzhen, Peter forges a partnership with BGI, the world leader in genome sequencing, technology that eliminates all guesswork in medical diagnosis. Combined with SCNT, he would possess both the technology to target future health risks and correct them before they ever happen. But owning the right technology would mean nothing without a country to embrace its use. Bahamas is almost like the 51st state of the United States. It sits there half an hour away from Miami. I initiated and helped to write the stem cell legislation, and I took them to many countries. Ultimately, the Bahamas adopted them into law. The Bahamas now has the opportunity to host several important stem cell initiatives. Prime Minister Christie has shown tremendous courage and political savvy in order to guide this through the legislature. I don't think I've ever seen or been at a more beautiful place. Two years ago, Peter Nygaard called me to say that if your country is prepared to pass legislation, I would find a way to bring scientists who I have retained, and I'm prepared to have them come into the world. But I want you to know that <clears throat> stem cell legislation will be passed by us today. God bless Tina Nagar. So 
So Bahamas stands alone in being a unique country that has written laws and has made SCNT legal. Who's gonna save the world? It's been said that if you build it, they will come. This is basically building a new Mayo Clinic. Now, on an island paradise, Peter Nygaard will join hands with the will of a nation and the legislating power of the Bahamian government to build the world's first state-of-the-art clinic to integrate genomic sequencing and SCNT technology, free of political restriction and years ahead of its time. This will be the first of many future Nygaard clinics in places like India, Macau and Thailand. He has risked everything, his fortune, his reputation, even his own body. Now look at my before and after pictures. I come from anti-aging to reverse aging. I've been on stem cell therapy now four times a year for the past three years. I'm a living testimonial that this really works. The time has come. This is a quantum leap. The future is now. This is Peter Nygaard's message through the effort of stem cell research that God has already given us our own medicine tucked within our bodies. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Uh, th there you saw Peter Nygaard who was uh, doing yeoman's work around the world um, in preventive health and preventive medicine. Uh, we want to take a break right here on our program and when we come back we'll talk to Mr. Nygaard about the RAD Festival. We'll come right back.